Hey, welcome to another radio related video. And uh, this is a, a small review of a piece of software that's uh, called EHOCW. Uh, this is a software transmitter decoder uh, or in the uh, AM radio lingo, um, it's a uh, keyer and decoder. Um, a keyer means that if you're a ham radio operator and want to send Morse code, this piece of software will actually um, send Morse code with your radio. So you don't have to, uh, you know, key, you'll just have to type whatever you want to send. And it's also a decoder, but be careful, I've noticed something. Uh, the place where you get that piece of software for decoding CW signal is on the website of Fox 8 Echo Hotel Oscar, which is at www.f8eho.net. Then you'll go on the left side and click the download button. Now you've got the new version, which is EHO CW 1.00. You don't want that. This one is only a keyer, it does not decode. So you'll have to click the old version. Click here the link to download the old. EHOCW version. This one has a CW decoder. And if you want to have more help, just below the link there's the EHOCW document software in English on PDF. So you have the uh, documentation that comes with the software. Um, basically it's a very easy to set up program. Um, since it's meant for uh, ham radio operators, if you're just a listener, uh, you don't have to fill out the full um, features of this program because it will ask you for your call sign and so on. It doesn't matter if you just don't do it. You just click OK and continue to the program. And you go into the decoder mode at the top. You put that little check mark decoder at the bottom. And um, well, the only thing you have to do is that you see when Morse code signals are present, there's little spikes here. You see the Morse code signal here, you see it here in another representation. But here you will see that there's a spike everywhere Morse code is present. All you have to do is take your mouse and click over the spike and it will start decoding. Um, major problems with most pieces of software uh, that decode Morse code is the uh, fact that when it's sent by a human, so if a ham radio operator has a manual key, Usually what happens is the manual keys, you tend to, um, you know, the speed isn't always exactly correct. You tend to go a little faster or slower. Uh, you know, we're not computers, we're humans, so um, the precision of the key is not always great. And especially if you find, you know, maybe a, a new ham radio operator in, Mars, in, in CW that's not used to sending Morse code, you'll see more problems in the speed of uh, you know the regular speed of the sent signal and um, that's the major problem of most pieces of software is that when someone sends CW or Morse code in um, a manual way uh, programs tend to have difficulty in decoding so here for example we see that the signal I'm decoding is the S503 station in Slovenia sending CQs here now you see lots of garbage. Um, when it's a little noisy and when the signals are not steady, it does happen a lot in most pieces of software. Um, it's this one worse than others, I am not sure. I think this one does a job, the best job it can. Um, what really amazes me about this piece of software is the speed at which the program adjusts itself to the speed of the signal. Most signals, most programs I've used, when you change to another CW signal, you gotta allow at least, you know, 20, 30 seconds before the program really clearly evaluates the speed when you're in automatic speed mode, which is here, automatic detection, speed detection is right there. This one is amazing. You just tune a signal and it, it doesn't take more than about one or two seconds before but everything is decoding and everything is working. And that is probably what amazes me most about this piece of software. Um, I find it a little weird that in the uh, 1.0 version, they, they took out the decoder. 
Uh, I don't understand why you would do that, but um, apparently what he's saying is that the decoder uh, has gone for another project, so maybe he's working on something other, something else. But uh, basically, uh, download the old version, don't download the new one if you want to just decode because the uh, new one does not have a decoder. So I've decoded a few signals, so if we tune around for example and try to find some uh, CW signals try to find something to decode here there's a signal right here there's a pile up there, it's not a good idea because too many signals at the same time What you do is you just tune into the frequency where you hear CW signals. You wait for it to appear here in the uh, little corner box where you got your spectrum. You click on the spikes. And then at the bottom you look at what's being decoded. So here we'll wait for a signal. So um, you can see that the adjustment was almost instantaneous. Um, the, the word per minute changed. And it's really fast. That is probably the most amazing thing. So we don't have much of a signal to decode here. That's a signal to the code here. And here you see an ID probably from a German, uh, not a German, a British Amory operator. Um, one thing I noticed about this piece of software is that sometimes it does not send or decode the full text before another one is sent. That is something that was a little surprising. So if, for example, someone's sending a signal and you're not... It's very difficult to decode here because there's just so much of a... So many signals at the same time, it's rather difficult and most pieces of software will have difficulty with that. Try to decode something. So, like I was saying, uh, if a word is sent and the CW signal stops, sometimes you're missing the last one or two letters, and that's a little weird. Uh, and you'll see that when a CW signal comes back on, well, it completes. Um, also, the fact that it goes in. The software, the way it works, kind of uh, takes uh, a bunch of letters at a time instead of each letter appearing. Most pieces of software that I've seen decoding would actually put pretty much the CW signal letter by letter at the same time. But the problem is, I've seen that in most cases here, it just goes by group. So that's why probably there are some missing parts. Uh, apart from that, well, you've got your UTC time at the right, you've got uh, some settings. Um, of course, you've got all the settings that you can put into uh, the program. Uh, when you fill out your call sign and info, uh, what it does is that you have these, uh, you can, you know, send all your information and let the computer just do it, uh, which is pretty cool. And of course, at the right, you've got your uh, words per minute that you can send. That is uh, on the right side. You've got these little boxes where you can actually um, put more of your personal information to send, which is going to be done automatically. And um, it can uh, work in different modes, send through a MIDI, send uh, through audio. Um, so it seems like an interesting piece of software. 
Uh, here you see that there was a call for K7ZV that was sent. Now you see the last one's missing a V. And now you see that as it starts decoding, the V was completed. That's what I mean. You're missing out on the last letter when the CW signal stops. And that can be a little annoying, I would say. So overall, not the best program I've ever used to decode CW, but it does the job that it's meant for. And it's pretty easy to use and tune with this. Uh, but just be careful, you need the version 0.92. Don't download the new 1.0 version. It's, uh, there's no decoder inside. Uh, one word of uh, notice here. Uh, when I installed, this is a Windows 8 machine with 64 bits. Uh, it told me that the Windows 8 64 bits version, uh, not every module would be working in it. So um, if you have a 64-bit machine, it might be wise uh, uh, to check, make sure that everything works like you want. Um, I did right-click on the icon and do a uh, compatibility mod into Windows XP. Actually seems to, be, to work better. And uh, it stopped telling me that I'm not in a 32-bit uh, uh, environment. So EHOCW piece of software. Um, available for download free of charge. All you have to do is go to the Foxtrot 8 Echo Hotel Oscar.net website and click the old EHOCW version if you want to try it. You see 13 megabytes download. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, little view and review of uh, this piece of software. And um, if you like our videos, click the subscribe button and uh, Hope you come back. There's uh, hundreds and hundreds of videos about radio. So if you love radio, if you're a ham radio operator, this is a great channel to be. But thanks for watching. 73.